Hello everybody, uh, this is Annie O'Hanna, public school educator from L.A. Matheson Secondary, right here in Surrey, not too far from SFU Surrey actually. Uh, it is my honor to be with you today, although I'm not there in person, um, I, I double booked myself. There's an incredible art exhibit in Westminster, go in U.S. Mr. going on uh, that we have some things from our Pride Week here at Matheson being displayed, so I, I did have to be there for that. So in any case, I'm still here, uh, if only in spirit. And and through video and what I'd like to do is really talk to you about how to handle uh, the ideas of frustration anxiety and pressure and yes I am in my classroom uh, and that is very purposeful because I want to come at it from the idea of being a teacher being in that classroom and to be to be clear that doesn't mean that this can't be possible in the workplace or at home uh, but definitely something that a lot of youth face uh, is the idea of feeling that pressure uh, when it comes to school when it comes to that learning process so that's what i want to focus on today Part of my talk will also involve a little bit of Aboriginal and Indigenous knowledge. So I do want to acknowledge and recognize that we do stand on the unceded Coast Salish territories, the Kwantlen, Katsi, and Semiamu peoples. And that in fact, it's very important to recognize this because just as it is important to recognize the need for mental health and wellness, so too we need to understand that there are solutions, there is knowledge that comes from indigenous understanding and that we can use that to help us move forward. I also very quickly want to say a huge shout out to Shauna Narayan and the many others that helped plan this day. It's, it's lovely, it's amazing, uh, it's the best thing ever uh, to see just how many people are willing to start having these discussions. So I'm very honored to be part of the day. So I'm going to come at you with four main things. And hopefully you have a handout that I put together uh, that, that should be there for you. And it looks something, oh sorry, it's upside down, isn't it? It looks something like this and something like this all right so excuse me as i look at my notes from time to time let's be really honest you've got to roll with it frustration anxiety and pressure are not things we can alleviate completely my argument is that in fact not only can we not alleviate it completely but actually, in a positive way, it might be, not always, but it could be a sign that you're about to make progress. You're taking on something new. You're challenging yourself or something is challenging you. But you're at the doorstep of making progress. And it's just that door that's leading to that frustration, that's leading to that anxiety, that pressure of really not knowing what's on the other side. So. I think it's a problem to say that we can somehow make these disappear because I don't think we can actually. So we have to roll with it. But in the knowledge that in trying that new concept, in trying something new, in things not always going right, there's a lesson to be learned and there's progress and that we are going to be better for it. Now, how do we deal with that? How do we roll with it in a good way, in a safe way? And it doesn't mean that we have to keep it locked in and can't talk about it and, and somehow um, just you know see it, well, it is what it is. Well, it's not, it is what it is. And the way to do that, the way to avoid that, that whole cliche to begin with is to think safe. So SAFE is a little acronym uh, that stands for Safety Allows for Freedom and Expression. Find a safe person. Find someone that is non-judgmental, that will hear you out. And I mean really hear you out. I'm going to come back to that in a second. Find someone that might not have all the answers, but will be able to listen to you and to really actively engage in the process of understanding what is at the root of that frustration of that anxiety, of that pressure. Find someone that can ask those questions rather than judging, rather than simply saying, oh, it'll get better, things, you'll get over it. That's not safe, right? So remember that little acronym there, right? Uh, safety that allows for freedom and expression. Third, give me a break. Something that I know as teachers we can do better, as human beings we can do better, Everything needs to stop at some point. Everything needs a break. 
There's so much research in terms of neuroscience that tells us that our brain repairs, builds, uh, sorry, builds synapses, builds connections when we sleep, when we take a break, when we relax. Most of nature cannot go full stop. There are seasons, there are waves, right? There's a cyclical nature to everything. So let, let's keep this in simple terms. It's okay to take the water break. It's okay to take that five minutes off. It's okay to take that walk. It's okay to check Facebook once in a while. It's okay to go get a snack. It's okay to just go check out a movie and come back to that assignment later. Now, are there safe ways to do this? Are there healthy ways to do this? Absolutely. And we always want to try to avoid that frustration and anxiety and pressure that leads to things like substance use where we have less control. But that being said, it is not lazy. It is not procrastinating. It is not a problem to take a break. So find that mental health break. Find that safe way to do it. Find the way that you enjoy. If that means watching a soccer game or playing a soccer game or just talking with friends, the break, you're going to be all the much better for taking that break. Last but not least, be a CEO. Oh, isn't that interesting, right? Now, you know, as we all know, money doesn't solve all our problems. Money doesn't bring happiness. And, and that is really true. But that's not the CEO I'm talking about right now. What I'm talking about is being a communicator that communicates early and often. Maybe the teacher's kind of scary. Maybe the boss is kind of scary. Maybe that's where the pressure is coming from, the assignment's coming from. Well, we've got to flip that script a little bit. Because if we always fear, if we always feel that person's not going to listen, then that frustration, anxiety, and pressure is just going to build up. And if we don't have a safe person to go to, right, uh, if we're not quite sure how to handle the situation, usually it leads to simply late assignments, failure. Um, and, and when I mean failure, I don't mean something that you can learn from, but just something that you've let get away from you, um, that the frustration becomes so much that you simply collapse into failure. That is the kind of failure we never want. So the easy way is to be a CEO, talk, communicate, email that teacher mess. I, I love getting emails from students when they're struggling. I don't get this. I don't understand that. I don't think this is going to be enough time for me. Here's why. And here's a solution uh, to how I can overcome uh, this, this frustration or, or this lack of, of being able to finish this. I can't uh, really, I, I can't say anything more that then communication is key. And the earlier to do it and the more you do it, no, it is never a problem. It is never annoying. Because if you're feeling that frustration, if you're feeling that anxiety, and you don't tell anyone, no one really can know until it's too late. By the time it manifests into something physical, where you might be angry and, and almost uh, violent, I would say, that can be mental, verbal, or physical, doesn't have to be, just be physical, well, now we've almost gone too far. But if you, in the moments that it begins, can identify that, this assignment's hard, I'm not getting this, I think I have a question that I need to ask the teacher, or three weeks for this project, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pull it off, let me contact the teacher. So I encourage you, in all facets of your life, to be that CEO, to communicate early and often. So I'd like to close with this. So those are my four tips, but let's get into some indigenous knowledge that shows us how to handle frustration, anxiety, and pressure in also four ways. Four is a theme of this talk, I guess you could say. And it comes from the tradition of the medicine wheel. Now, not all indigenous cultures follow an understanding of the medicine wheel. Um, this is more of an Anishinaabe tradition, is my understanding. But that being said, the idea of a circle, and you can see behind me I have a dream catcher right behind me. Uh, I, I like the idea of the circle. My opening day, you can't really see it, but I'm set up in a circle. A circle is at the, rise of the very root of everything cyclical, of everything to do with nature. Um, the idea that the circle is such a powerful shape that can take the most stress 
actually. There's a reason we have portholes on boats, not port squares, not port triangles, holes, because the strength of that circle. So I always like to think about it that way. Well, in First Nations understandings, there are four key quadrants, and there's so many different um, variations on this. I'm going to focus just on, on four main ones, and that is the physical, the emotional, the mental, and the spiritual. So what I've done is I've laid out some very simple questions for you to think about when you're thinking of ways to handle frustration, expre- uh, sorry, anxiety, and pressure. When you can find your way to a positive space in all four, the circle is complete. It's not broken. There's not one piece missing. And that's the key here, that you're not going to find the answer in just one place. So let's start with the mental. Are you allowed to have your own thoughts? Are you free to be you? Now, this is one of the timeless questions, right? How are you free to be yourself in every setting? But mentally speaking, we find ourselves so frustrated, so anxious, filled with pressure about are we good enough, right? Um, Are we, can we be ourselves? Well, I encourage you that in finding that ability to be yourself, it's amazing how that you can deal with elements of frustration, anxiety, and pressure. You know, you don't understand what's going on and you want to ask a question. But if in the back of your mind you hear, oh, that's a stupid question, or oh, that kid always asks questions, can you be mentally free? Can you be yourself? How many times I've seen students not able to express themselves, not because they didn't know how to, not because they weren't able to actually engage in a communication about what they didn't understand, it's what mentally they thought it's what they feared from others it's that anxiety of being called you know something derogatory about being willing to ask a question so i want you to consider that that mental aspect also the emotional and the emotional is can you show your emotions all of them all of them in a safe place without judgment It's not about being happy 100% of the time. It's not the perfect smile all day, all night. Oh, I'm good. How are you? I'm perfect. Thank you. We know that, you know, the top of the water might be still, but the undercurrent's usually pretty rough water. So it's okay to express sadness. It's okay to express anger. It's okay to express, I'm okay, right? It's fine. All of the spectrum is okay. But we want to do it in a way that's safe. So emotionally, we should never feel stunted because that leads to frustration. That leads to anxiety. That leads to pressure. At the same time, we want to try to do it so we're never harming anyone mentally, physically, emotionally, any of those things. That we can express our anger in ways that are constructive, in dialogue, in speaking to one another, and being that CEO, rather than focusing solely on one's own anger. And again, back to an earlier point, for some people that can lead to substance use, um, and that is a bit, uh, that, that can be an unraveling. And we wanna try to avoid that at all costs, if possible. So emotionally, it's okay to be you. It's okay to put it out there that you're not okay. And again, another piece of that puzzle, of that frustration, of that anxiety, of that pressure, seems to be dealt with physically are you comfortable are you safe what kind of body language do you use so this is more well it's kind of a double-sided thing here there's a responsibility but also an ability to do something first of all sitting in a desk all day being stuck in one position all day can be highly frustrating can really shut down your creative spirit, right? So if you're not comfortable, if you're literally in a space where you feel you know, frustration and pressure, well, that's certainly not gonna allow you to handle it properly. So find that new space, find somewhere you're comfortable, change it up a bit, 
that's a fantastic way to sometimes find yourself a little bit freer, a little bit more able to deal with the situation at hand. Are you safe? Your body language, that's a big one. In negativity, in judgment, there is always frustration, there is always anxiety, and sometimes it's a projection of our own feelings. We don't feel good, so we put it onto others. So I encourage you, if you happen to be that safe person, right, that you need to be able to let the person kind of tell you what's going on without you judging them, without you criticizing through your eyes, without that, you know, kind of cross, you know, back, you know, weird frown going on. That is not helpful, to be honest. And certainly for ourselves, the ability to use our physical being to get out there, to find that mental break, maybe in a physical way, is really amazing. Last but certainly not least is spiritual. And I list spiritual as, can you express your beliefs and values? Can you be free-spirited? This is not about religion. Uh, This is more about your spirit, your faith, your spirituality. So literally the idea of being able to express yourself, to be, that's it, to be, right? To allow that spirit to breathe. You're at work, you're dressed up, or you're at school, and there's, you know, there's the bells, and there's certain things you have to do. You know, your spirit is in a a box. So how can we remove that box as a teacher, as a fellow student, as a coworker, as a colleague? What can we do to allow all of us to express ourselves in that spiritual dimension, again, without putting anybody else down, without you know one having more power than the other, but rather feeling that we're able to express ourselves. So really, that's it for me. Uh, I hope you found this useful. I hope that this indigenous knowledge can help you find that balance. And I just want to finish with that closing thought of this is not something we have to hide from. This is not something that is curable. It's something that we have to engage with and to acknowledge that when we really want to push ourselves forward, when we want to find the better versions of ourselves, we will have those moments. And life certainly will throw you curveballs. The idea is how to handle it and then hit it out of that ballpark. So I wish you all the best in mental health and wellness. Uh, I hope you find it in yourself to be that CEO, to find that safe place, and really to understand that we need this, and so too does everybody else. That it's not just about me, myself, and I, but we are a community. So if I want to feel safe, if I want to feel balanced, if I want to be able to handle frustration, anxiety, and pressure, I should be that ally, that advocate that can do the same for somebody else. I wish you all the best, all my relations.